So we're going to be talking about Elvis today. Yeah, I love Elvis. Do you know what's always annoyed me about him though? Why do all the people who dress up and sing as Elvis always dress up as Fat Elvis? Anyway, let's talk about Fat Elvis. <laughs> Elvis Presley, at least to me, is known primarily for two things. That time, his first record was played on repeat for two hours by a DJ, something I'll talk about in another video, I'm sure, and being a lard ass of legendary proportions. Is your heart filled with pain? Shall I come back again? Arguably, the most famous example of the latter is that time Elvis flew across the country to eat like 20 sandwiches. If you went across the country for a sandwich, I'm assuming it's a glorious sandwich. Yeah, this is like a sandwich that has since entered the realm of myth, the fool's gold loaf, which according to legend contains somewhere in excess of 8,000 calories per sandwich. Wow. Yeah, um, the way you make a fool's gold loaf is you basically get a loaf of bread, you get a pound of bacon, you shove that in there, you get a jar of peanut butter, you shove that in there, you get a jar of grape jelly, you shove that in there as well, and then to top it all off, you get a big handful of butter and cram that in there too. The website said it serves eight to 10 people or one Elvis. This is meant to be for one person. Yeah, it, like this sandwich is an affront to God, like just wrapped in bread. It's awful. <laughs> it's a testament to man's arrogance in sandwich form. It's like, it's offensive to look at, but also at the same time, kind of sexy. That you look at it and you go, I would. Do you like kind of like that guy in that um, uh, McDonald's advert? Are you familiar with this? I'm not. That I, um, oh, we're going to talk about this because this picture needs to be shown. <laughs> People might not know. Like, do you know my, one of my favourite things is big companies using modern day slang but not really understanding what it means. And the best example of that was a couple of years ago when McDonald's heard that the new thing the kids were saying is I'd hit that. And they didn't know what I'd hit that meant but they put it into an ad anyway. And this is true because you'll be able to find the picture. They put a guy looking over like this and underneath he said, I'd hit that in a banner ad. So everyone's like, why is that guy want to fuck that burger? <laughs> like this guy, bring up the picture and zoom in on his face. He is giving that burger the fuck eyes. And like McDonald's immediately removed the ads offline. But you can't, once it's been online once, it's there forever. So it will exist and it will live on in infamy. And I mention it now because I love the idea of some marketing executive man putting that in front of a McDonald's like big wig and going, yeah. That'll get the kids. Somebody, it's just some guy getting a burger the fuck out. It's going, I'd hit that. It's like, yeah. This feels so good. I'm worried I'm going to get this burger pregnant. That's why, like, for a while, one of my favourite Twitter profiles to follow was companies using Bay. <laughs> because it was just like, for a while, every company on Twitter tried to use Bay to sell their shit. I love when companies try and use Twitter and they just utterly fail. And it's even more hilarious now that like, Wendy's just dunks on them. Because that's all. That really happens with most companies on Twitter now, just Wendy's dunks on them. <laughs> like when McDonald's tweeted out for Black Friday and they didn't um, put the link, it just said like, Black Friday deal, insert ad copy or something here, and Wendy's just like shot back. Within seconds, when even like, when the tweets were as broken as the ice cream machine. <laughs> <laughs> so we've gone way off topic. Elvis and his sandwich. Oh yeah, this fool's gold loaf. Like, legend has it, it was invented in the 1970s by a then teenager called Nick, this name I can't pronounce. And it became a legendary like, you know, food stuff in the Denver area with countless teenagers trying to tackle it over the years. Eventually, news of this ginormous world destroying sandwich reached Elvis while he was having a conversation with two Denver policemen in his Graceland mansion. And Elvis, being Elvis, heard about this giant 8,000 calorie sandwich that drunk people like tried to eat and just like almost die in orgasmic bliss and just went, yeah, sounds good. Let's go get one right now. <laughs> After hearing about this awesome, amazing sandwich, Elvis had one of the policemen that he was having dinner with call up a Denver restaurant to order 22 of them and then called up an airfield where his private jet was being stored and told the pilot to be ready for liftoff in a few minutes. Remember, so that you could go and try a sandwich. I aspire to one day give as few fucks as Elvis did. Because like, are you familiar with like some of the more stupid things he used to do with his money? Like, I'm not talking about like flying across the country to try a sandwich. That's like low level shit for Elvis. Like, do you know what his like one of his habits was? That like, his accountant told him, please stop doing this. Like he gave away Cadillacs all the time. Whenever he went to a new city, what he'd do is he'd go to a Cadillac dealership and buy like 10. 
and he'd get the keys and he'd give them away as tips. And, his, and I remember like, there's a story about his accountant going, Elvis, please stop giving away cars. And Elvis was like, nah, fuck you. I want to give away Cadillacs. Like, you probably think I'm making this up. You better find like the, the source and put the thing where Elvis, like, his accountant was like, please stop giving away cars. I like, no, fuck you, I'm Elvis. I'll just, write, I'll just sing more songs, it's fine. When you get to the point where someone has to tell you to stop giving people stop cars. Give, like, 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 Elvis, I get it. You're a nice guy. Please stop giving away Cadillacs. You know what would help you? Relax. Here's a Cadillac. No, Elvis, stop it. <laughs> so Elvis, turn out your pockets. Why? Turn them out. And he turns out he's got like 40 Cadillac keys. It's like, Elvis. It's like that scene in his SpongeBob, isn't it, with all the, uh, the diapers in the walls? <laughs> Elvis, are there any more Cadillacs in this house? And he looks under the bed, and the bed is just like a quilt over a Cadillac. <laughs> so, Carl, let's get back to the sandwiches. Oh, yeah, the sandwiches. So, so, sorry about that. Elvis is just so damn interesting to talk about. He's such a cool dude. Anyway, literally an hour after Elvis had heard about his legendary fool's gold sandwich from his Denver policeman guests, they were all sat in an airfield in an airport hangar next to Elvis's private jet waiting for their sandwiches, which were hand-delivered by the owner of the restaurant they called up. And Elvis, obviously, being Elvis and being the nice guy that he was, obviously, let, said, ask the guy who ran the restaurant, would you like to eat some of these sandwiches with us? And obviously, you don't turn down the opportunity to eat a giant sandwich with Elvis. So the guy went, of course I'll, like, knock back a couple of these sandwiches with Elvis. Let's fucking go. And obviously, the pilots, they were just sat there, you know, at the window, just like, pawing at him. Elvis, being Elvis, of course, said, hey, pilots, do you want to eat some sandwiches with Elvis? And they were like, Fuck yeah, I do. So they all sat down in a big group and ate sandwiches for about two hours. And after they were done, they washed it down with a couple of bottles of champagne and then left. Obviously not the pilots, I'm guessing, but they all washed it down with a couple of bottles of champagne and left. In grand total, Elvis was there for about three hours, during which time him and his guests consumed about 80 days worth of calories. So like, Holy shit, at that point, you can't even say Elvis was addicted to food. He just had a commitment to it. So, Carl, have you got any more cool stories about Elvis? I do, but unfortunately, they're going to have to wait for another day because I have to now be a nice big brother and say hi to my sister who watches these videos and mysteriously, when we got 100,000 subscribers, started being a fan. So, hi, Jamie. I hope you're having a nice day. Here's your shout out. And you can tell all your friends that you're really my brother, because apparently they don't believe her. They don't believe like her when she says, oh, my brother's got like, oh, he's on YouTube, he's really popular. And she brought it up and, like, on a phone or whatever, and her friend's like, no, you don't know him. That's not your brother. Has she not got pictures of her with you? <laughs> no, she doesn't, because she hates taking photos. So there you go. And uh, my favourite thing about it is, obviously, as a big brother, it's my duty to, like, you know, make fun of her. She is obsessed with, obviously, like, all... Um, uh, kids her age out with YouTube and she gets obsessed with particular YouTubers and I don't know who the fuck any of these guys are. I'm way too old for any of that shit but all I know is she prints off their pictures and puts them on her wall on her door and all I see is like oh wow it's just a haircut. I just look at it it's like that's a fucking haircut right there isn't it? It's like what a lid that guy's got. Pink on top wow that looks good mate. You don't you, you look so unique with that haircut. And I just remember going, oh Jamie who's this? I don't like him anymore he's rubbish. And why is his picture still here then? No reason. I don't know who it is, it's like, apparently it's like, it's a pair of guys who play pranks on each other. Does that ring a bell? Some dipshits who like get naked in all the videos. Or something. No, like not, not ben anyway. something or other. I don't know. People in the comments are going to be screaming at me right now. <laughs> but no, it's like some chuckle fuck like that, I think. And he does prank videos and she like, is obsessed with them. And whenever she's watching them, I just like peek my head out the door like, and go, and I see her like, you know, trying to like, surreptitiously take photos with her phone for her phone background. It's like, oh, Jamie, I see you, what you're doing. I see you in there. I see you like crushing on that boy on YouTube. Like, I, don't, I don't have a crush on him. It's not, it's not. And the thing I remember is about one of them, I tweeted at him. So I've got a few, I've got a couple of thousand followers, so obviously it shows up more prominently. So I tweeted at them and said, oh yeah, my sister's got a crush on you. And they liked the tweet and I showed my sister that and she <laughs> fucking died. She got so angry, she didn't talk to me for an entire day. <laughs> I don't know 
remember who it was now. It was going to really piss me off. Some dude called Ben or some shit like that. Yeah. But I just like tweeted at him and he liked the tweet saying like, oh, my sister's got a big crush on you. He's like, I don't have a crush on him. Carl, delete that. Who can he, Did he see it? I went, yeah, he did see it, Jamie. He liked it. You know, he better not have. He better not. <laughs> so yeah, Jamie, have a good... <laughs> oh, you enjoyed this shout out. Never ask me for anything again. <laughs>